In this video, we are going to talk about how to add event schema markup on your WordPress website. So if you have a website where you post various events and you want to showcase them in search engine results with some rich snippets like in Google event cards or maybe in the Google event section. So this video is for you. Hi, my name is Ankit and welcome to Magazine 3 YouTube channel where we talk about everything related to WordPress. And if you want to learn more about that, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video. So in this video, we are going to take a look at how we can optimize our WordPress website where we post various events so that these event pages or blog posts get listed in search engine results with some rich snippets or maybe some highlighted events card like maybe in Google search results or maybe your blog post or pages get listed in search engine event section. So in order to get your event blog posts or pages in this kind of highlighted results, the basic thing you need to do is to add event schema on your WordPress website. So let's dive in in our WordPress backend and I'll show you how easy it is to add this kind of event schema on your WordPress website. So here we are in a fresh copy of our sample WordPress setup. And right now we, if we go to posts, we have some sample posts with some dummy data. So right now we have not added any schema markup here. So if you just go ahead and copy any of the blog link and open this tool, rich result test from Google. And if we paste our blog URL here and click on test URL. So this tool is going to read our website code and it will give us a result that if this blog post or this URL is eligible for any kind of rich snippet results or in other words, does it have any schema markup added in the code as of now? So here we can clearly see that it says no items detected. It means there is no schema markup added yet. So now we are sure that there is no schema markup added. So we come back to our WordPress backend and we go to our plugin section and then click on add new. And here we will search for the plugin schema. And now we will be installing this plugin schema and structured data for WP and AMP. And this plugin is from Magazine 3 itself. And as you can see, we have a pretty good star rating as well as 80,000 plus active installations. So let's go ahead and install this plugin and then click on activate. All right. So now the plugin is installed. Let's go in the settings section. So here we are in the settings section of this plugin and here we can assign some global schema setting that will work on the overall website. So we can add few global schema here by assigning about page here. So you will get the list of all the pages and you can select about page from your site. And similarly, we will add a contact page. So this is going to add some global schema for your website. So this plugin is not just for adding event schema markup on your website. So it's going to give you a boost in overall schema markup for various things. So now for the home page, we can assign website schema. So we will turn that on. Along with that, we can have site link search box. Let's turn that on. And you can also add schema markup on your archive pages as well as you can add breadcrumb schema as well as you can add comments schema as well. So depending upon what you need, so depending upon if you want to add that or not, you can go ahead and turn these options on or off. And after that, we have an option for knowledge graph. Here is the data type you need to select. So basically it's asking us to choose if this website is an organization or a personal blog. So again, depending upon your situation or your requirement, you can choose the options here and your website will be optimized for better Google search engine results. Once that is done, we go to next option, which is very important. That is AMP. So if you are implementing AMP on your WordPress website, so you will see an option of checking this on or off here, but we are not using AMP on this example. So that's why this option is disabled. But if you are, then make sure you turn this option on, which is structured data for AMP so that schema markup will be added on your AMP pages as well. Once all that is done, make sure you save changes and then we go to schema types. 
And here we can see right now we do not have any schema type assigned to this website. So we will go and click on this add schema type button. So we'll click on that and this will start a setup wizard. So here it's asking us to select schema. So what type of schema we want to add on this website. So we will select event. Once that is done, let's click on next. And now it's asking us the condition where we want to assign this new event schema. So there are various condition statements that you can use. Right now we will choose post types equals to post. So basically all the blog posts of this website will get event schema added on them. Or you can just play around with all these conditions. If you want, you can add this schema on a particular blog post as well. Or maybe there are various other conditions that you can play around with. But right now we will select post types equal to post and all the post will get event schema markup added on them. Once that is done, let's click on next. And that's it. We are done with the setup. Let's click on let's go so that we can come back on this edit schema type. So here we can see that we have just added event schema and we can also we also have an option to add event schema types. So this is a kind of a subcategory of event schema where you can choose what type of event schema you want to add. Is it a children event? If it is a dance event? So if we choose this option here, it will be added to all the blog posts. But you want to keep this option for blog level uh, customization. So we will assign different events for different blog posts. And you can also turn the reviews on or off from here. So once again, depending upon the requirement of your website, you can go ahead with that. So let's go back in blog posts from here and let's open this blog post. And now in this blog post, if we scroll at the very bottom, we will see schema structure data uh, option here. And here we have the modify event schema output. So it means that event schema is added on this blog post. Now to verify that we come back to this uh, rich result test page. We will refresh this result once and see if there is any event schema added or not. So as of now, there was no item detected. Let's see what happens now. So now we can see it says one invalid item detected and the item detected is a structured data, which is events but it's showing some errors. So that's completely understandable. We will resolve all these errors in a minute. So now we can see these unnamed items. We have this red color errors and these yellow color warnings. And as we have mentioned in our previous videos as well, you can ignore the warnings because they are optional, but never ignore these red errors. So we will resolve that in a minute. We just wanted to check if there is any default event schema markup added on the pages or not. And we can clearly see that this event schema markup is added on this page. Now take a look at this right now. It's showing that the event schema markup is added on this page. And the type here is event because we have not selected any subcategory of this event schema. So we will edit that in the blog post itself. So we will come back here and refresh this page once we do the edit and see if we can change this event type to some subcategory of event schema. So we will come back to this in a few minutes. So now we are sure that event schema markup is added. We just need to fill up all the required details. So we come back to this post and we click on modify event uh, data. And now we can fill up all these details related to this event so that we can properly give all the information required to assign this event schema for this blog post. So we will start with the first that is the type. And here we can see again the same option, a kind of a subcategory of event schema that what kind of event it is. So maybe we can add a food event schema. So we will assign this as an ID. So you can assign the um, status for this event and all the details. So let me just go ahead and fill up all these details quickly. All right. So we have just filled some sample dummy data here. And now let's go ahead and update this post. 
and we go back to this rich schema and let's go ahead and refresh the result once again and now we see that our red error is gone we now have two valid items detected and we have some warnings and here we see that we have the events schema markup as well as we have the local business schema markup added so depending upon what details you fill up here the schema markup will get updated accordingly and here we see that all the details that we have entered are visible here once again if you remember that earlier the type of schema was showing event only but now we see that because we have added food event in our settings it's showing schema type as events but what type of event it is a food event so you can provide this detailed information about your event so this is how easy it is to add event schema on your wordpress website using a simple plugin so if you like this video then make sure you hit the like button and if you want to watch more videos related to schema markup then make sure you watch our complete playlist the link is in the i button above and the video description below and if you want to learn more about wordpress then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell so that you can get notified whenever we upload our next video so that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next one